Shalom Aleichem, and welcome to Breast of Web Seminar, Parshas Noyach. This uh, Shabbos, we read the story of the flood. Right? A very interesting story. It's the most incredible thing that happened. God created a world knowing what was going to happen, and then he destroyed it. Basically, he brought a flood. He flooded the entire earth, except, as the Gemara says, Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael, there was nobody living there at the time. So the flood hit every place except Eretz Yisrael, destroyed all living matter. All living matter. Now, why did it happen? Why did the flood happen? And what was the reasoning behind the flood. I mean, Hashem has many messengers. He could choose any means of destroying humanity. Why the flood? The Gemara Nida explains that whoever wastes seed, if a male wastes his seed that could be life-giving, it's as if he brought a flood to the world because that was the sin of the generation of the flood. They were very powerful people. The Gemara says at that time, the Medrash, that the children were born. Three days later, they were walking around. They used to send a three-day-old kid to draw water from the well. They had an incredible life. True, they had to till the land because of the curse of Adam, whose seed also was wasted, which is why that whole scene began, began with Odom HaRishon, but after a while, men, at least during Odom HaRishon and Shesha's time, they recognized Hashem. Afterwards, they kind of forgot about Hashem. By Enosh, it says, Oz Huchal Likroi B'Shem Hashem, and Rashi explains, that uh, this is in last week's Pasha and Baratius, Huchal, from the word Hulin, from the word of mundane. They just uh, started uh, doing things as, as they wanted. And it was God no longer was part of their life. God gave the human race a capability of procreation. And procreation means we're supposed to control our emotions. We're supposed to marry, the very first mitzvah of the Torah. Get a wife, get a husband, have children, procreate, let the world be filled with people. When a person wastes, he wastes, he's wasting more than just his seed. First of all, the seed, the origin of the seed is in the mind because it's the conscious or even subconscious thought of a person that arouses him to the sexual act. That being the case, the origin of the seed is in the mind. And if it's in the mind and the seed goes to waste, what went to waste? Part of the person's mind used to be an advertisement for some uh, charity organization in the States 50 years ago. It used to say, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Yes, it is. The problem today is that there's a waste by humanity. They go in the Middle East, they kill people left and right. You go, uh, what goes on in the streets, in the cities, there's killings all over waste everything is waste there's an old saying waste not want not if you don't waste you won't want the truth is the Zoya says that anyone who commits this sin of wasted seed he damages his income his income he can damage according to Shulchan Aruch the Rambam says Wasting the seed, you know, is a sickness for the body. It brings illness upon the body. So, wasting, this is the sin that happened in the generation of Noah. 
all that waste and it's a flood because you're taking fluids and you're spreading it out nowhere. That's a flood. Flood doesn't help anyone, right? If you have, a, you want to sometimes flood a field, so you do it engineeringly, you do it properly, and you can water the field, irrigate it properly. But if it's not done properly, then it's waste. And you have rivers that overflows, lakes that overflow, oceans that damage the the coasts and whatnot. The sin of Noah is the sin of waste. More specifically, wasted seed. And here the Torah is telling us that we have to be able to control it. Today, modern generation, all the psychologists and psychiatrists say there's nothing wrong with doing it. Go ahead, you need a release. No, the reason you're supposed to get married is because you have a release. But people do whatever they do, God forbid, and they waste. And their whole life can go to waste. And their whole being can go to waste. Their whole in intellect, their whole mentality goes to waste. This is what psychologists and psychiatrists are supporting today, waste. And this is something that the Torah is telling us in this week's Parsha that we have to avoid. Now, how do you avoid it? Well, Noah was a tzaddik. The Zohar says that a tzaddik is one who guards his covenant. He doesn't waste his seed. That's a tzaddik. What did Noah have to do? He just wasn't protected. I mean, God could have just saved him and whatever. Right? It could be like a water world and he could uh, just survive. No, that's not what God wanted. God told him to build an ark, teva. A teva in Hebrew also means a word. Not just an ark, but it means a word too. And God told Noah to build a teva, an ark, in order that he should be saved from the flood. An ark, teva, means our prayers to Hashem. Right? We're being overwhelmed in this generation. We have things coming at us. We have uh, the media 24 hours a day. We have uh, everything is rush and push and shove and move. Right? Don't waste a second. Don't waste a second. You're wasting your life, but don't waste a second. And we have been given the ability to build an ark, to build the words of our prayers to Hashem, to save us from this deluge of whatever is taking place outside. We have to learn to concentrate on prayer, right? I heard from Rabbi Yankim one of the big breasts of, of our generation. He, he quoted somebody, I don't remember who, but he said that uh, the ark, look at the dimensions. It was 30 L's high, that's Lamed, Lamed equals 30. It was 300 uh, L's long, that's represented by the Shin, 300. And the Nun was the width of the Teva, the Nun, 50, right? If you have the word 30, Lamed, and you have a Shin, 350, so you have the word Lashon, Lashon, which means the tongue, right? The tongue is what is helping us build these words and get these words out to Hashem, send them out to Hashem, plead, pray, beg, supplicate, and Hashem will protect us from the floodwaters and we'll be able to go further. One other short item in the week's parsha is the uh, generation uh, called the Dorha Floga, generation of uh, disbursement. When the nations got together, they said they don't want to flood anymore, but they're going to do battle with Hashem. They're going to build a tower of Babel to go all the way up to heaven. Right? They were taking the words and fighting heaven. God caused the heaven, God caused the. Um, the Tower of Babel to be destroyed, and he mixed up all the tongues so that when people talk, 
They won't be able to understand each other. There was no more unity. And since there was no more unity, they couldn't build the tower. All right? The Medrash tells us from here we learn the power of unity, what it means to stick together, and what it means the power of argument. You talk to somebody, they don't hear what you're saying, you're not listening to me, I don't know what you're talking about, right? They start talking above people's heads condescendingly and whatnot, right? There's no life, you can't live together, you have to disperse, right? The Torah is teaching us, on the other hand, the value of unity, what it means when we get together and we speak to each other with respect, with honor, that way we're able to get our message across. There is a God. We'll be able to unite and serve Hashem and pray to Him. And we'll all have the good life. Amen.